So you guys may have caught my recent video unboxing these $700 Apple wheels. At the end of that video, those wheels go back in this box, and they've lived there ever since. But here's the thing, it's kind of a shame, isn't it? This feat of engineering, these incredibly smooth rolling wheels made by Apple, rolling in a way that only an Apple wheel could roll. So it was a shame to see them sitting there, sadly, inside of the box that they shipped in. Where and how could I utilize? And of course, your mind goes to the obvious location. You have wheels, you make skateboard, don't you? So here's the thing though, if you're gonna make a skateboard using $700 Apple wheels, it's gotta be up to Apple standard. It's gotta fit in to the ecosystem after all. And most importantly, it's got to impress Tim Cook and Johnny Ive. Even though he's moved on from Apple now, you know he's gonna be watching this, of course. So I pulled out one of the wheels from the box and I started to look around the studio. I made a rule for myself that if I was gonna do this, I had to use parts and pieces that were already inside the studio. As you know, it's not particularly easy to peruse a hardware store at the moment. Looking through my toolbox and other places, and then I saw this thing. This is not a Mac Pro sitting on the desk. This is actually a replica chassis made to look like a Mac Pro in which you can put whatever parts you like. You could build a PC inside of here and I made a video a really long time ago. So I looked at this thing and I examined it. And I remembered from my original video that the front panel is actually removable. And then I looked a little closer at these pre-drilled holes and I thought to myself, my goodness, those could make a nice little location to feed a screw through. I popped this front panel off and I started to examine it further, thinking, I don't need this. Look at that thing. That's the size of a skateboard already. I hit the toolbox and I found some actual hardware that would work for me. I found some screws and washers that I could use to connect these wheels to this deck. Well then, the writing was on the wall. It was too obvious. I was going to make the Apple skateboard and impress even Johnny Ive. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is remove these little studs on the front panel. Now I could leave these on, but they're really serving no purpose, so they might as well come off. And because I set the rule to use stuff that was only around the studio, you'll see there's a tremendous number of washers. These are gonna act as spacers where we need them. Now let's dive back inside the wheels box. One, two, three, four. They should hold my weight, no problem. The thing I'm more worried about, to be honest, is this pivot point. Of course, a skateboard wheel has no need to pivot. Maybe this is better than a skateboard. Couldn't believe that I had the correct threading sitting in the toolbox. It's unbelievable. It's 10 years of having this studio and not throwing things away. The next thing is to pick the correct location. We want to distribute the weight as best as possible. Because this thing has this curvature to the inside here, we're probably gonna want the wheels to sit on this side, on the flush side, so we can push them further out towards the edge of this unit. One screw, one black washer, one small washer, one big washer. One, two, three, down, one in. And we're gonna need to remember that across the board here. Now on the other side, again, because this is a kind of long screw, I'm going to place one more big washer and one more small washer. And this is just, honestly, this is ridiculous. Look at how, <laughs> it's like Taylor made. It just fell on my lap. It's too easy, it's too ridiculous. Obviously, it's too good, it's too perfect. This is better. This is what these were intended for. Apple didn't even know why they made them. They really were just busy redesigning reinventing the skateboard all along. These aren't for the Mac Pro. Same drill, black washer, little washer, big washer. If hardware stores were open and I could go explore, I obviously could just get a shorter screw. But on the one side, the washer is kind of mandatory because if you examine the bottom, they have these little nubs and those would grind up and potentially get caught on the front panel. So the washer, when you place it here, creates a flat surface for those to sit against. They can spin freely. They don't hit each other, which was something I was worried about because they are so large. Hello? Hi, this is Mr. Lewis. 
This is him. Black washer, little washer, big washer. So those are just touch tightened right now. <laughs> you can see it already. It's already taking shape. <laughs> Something tells me this is gonna be difficult to ride, but man, it looks good. Talk about a little art piece, a very expensive art piece. Let's flip it over. Get the screwdriver out. The one necessary tool for this job here. <laughs> Oh man, look at this. It looks sort of professional. Oh man. <laughs> Apple skateboard. There you go, Johnny Ive. I did what you couldn't. I brought Apple officially, okay, unofficially, into the skateboard business. Tim Cook, you're missing out. Think of what you could charge for this. So that looks good on a tabletop, but can it hold a person? Here's a moment of truth. The question is, first, can it hold my weight? Okay. Holding the weight, no problem. I'll take it. And now what about actually riding it though? See, that's where the sideways, that's where the pivoting, that's where the 360 wheels are not working for you. Uh, or maybe they are. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> Oh man, little DIY, unexpected, the Apple skateboard using Apple's new $700 wheels. Oh!